Your Honor, due to the brevity of the recording, I would like permission to play it for the jury once again. I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. We all heard Mr. Lansing's so-called evidence. Replaying it would serve no purpose except to prejudice this jury. What my esteemed colleague is objecting to, Your Honor, is the truth. This recording shows a brutal reality. How quickly and efficiently a life can be extinguished by a professional killer. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Morgan is a legitimate coffee importer. Mr. Lansing, I'm going to allow one replay, after which you'll move on. Thank you, Your Honor. Morgan. You previously stated that the last time that you saw Lorenzo Alcazar was in the nursery with your daughter as you were preparing to leave the country. Is that correct? Yes. And then sometime within the next 12 hours, Lorenzo Alcazar disappeared. Without saying goodbye, without taking a personal belonging whatsoever, without utilizing his jet or, it would seem, any other method of private or commercial transportation out of the city whatsoever. Yes. No further questions. Cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. You've testified that you neither heard nor found any evidence of a struggle around the area where the so-called recorded evidence was found. Is that correct? Correct. You or your staff find any blood anywhere in the house? No. Furniture overturned? Nothing. Doors or windows opened which should have been shut? No. Was it Lorenzo Alcazar's usual practice to just take off without telling you? It happened fairly often. For what purpose? Business. That's rather vague. Well, I've come to realize that Lorenzo was involved with people who were far more dangerous than I was aware of. His being vague was a way of protecting me. From? Well, I can't exactly give you names, but Lorenzo was a powerful man. He didn't exactly get that way by being people's best friend. He had a way of convincing people to do what he wanted. Are we talking blackmail, grievous bodily harm? Objection, Your Honor. Leading the witness. Sustained. As far as you know, what is the longest period of time that Lorenzo Alcazar has been away without contact? I'd say a little over a month. A month? So for all you know, he could be away right now, conducting business somewhere. It's possible. Have you seen one shred of evidence that would lead you to believe, beyond a reasonable doubt, that Lorenzo Alcazar is, in fact, dead? No. Ever make his feelings about the defendant known to you? To me, anyone else who cared to listen. Lorenzo hated Jason. He harbored hatred for Jason's business partner, Sonny Corinthos, didn't he? Even more. Do you recall any unusual way Mr. Alcazar's animosity displayed itself? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Wasn't there some elaborate scheme involving Sonny's dead wife? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Where are you going with this? I am establishing a pattern, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Please answer the question. Well, there was this one time when Lorenzo made over a woman to look exactly like Sonny's dead wife, Lily. What? To what end? Well, Sonny was in a vulnerable state at the time. He wanted to break him. Can you be more specific, please? He wanted to drive Sonny crazy. Oh, interesting. Then doesn't it follow... I'm sorry, Your Honor, I will rephrase. Isn't it plausible that Lorenzo Alcazar could have said Jason Morgan's name into a tape recorder, fired off a silenced weapon, then dropped to the floor to create this so-called incriminating evidence, to frame Sonny's business partner, thereby placing Sonny Corinthos in yet another vulnerable position? Objection, Your Honor, please. This is absurd. Counsel is speculating. Overruled. The witness will answer. Well, knowing Lorenzo, that's not only plausible, but it's entirely possible. Thank you. No further questions. Redirect. Absolutely. 
Ms. Miller asked if you had any evidence to indicate that a crime had been committed in your home after Mr. Alcazar disappeared. Do you remember your answer? I said no. Well, isn't it possible that someone, presumably the killer, was able to clean up after the scene? Well, they would have had to have been incredibly quiet, but I suppose that's possible. How was your relationship with Mr. Alcazar at the time of his disappearance? It was complicated. Lorenzo could be a very difficult man. Mm. Apparently so, especially since he took your infant daughter from you and, and kept her away from you until the day in question. Were you afraid of him? At times. Mm. Enough to maybe let a killer into the house to stop that fear? Are you accusing me of being involved in Lorenzo's ah, death? Ah, wait, wait, wait. Now Lorenzo is dead. See, just a few minutes ago, you said that he was maybe off on a business trip. Well, can you blame me for wanting to believe that? I, I mean, do you really want my little girl to grow up not knowing her father? No, I understand. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't, didn't mean to upset you. We're just trying to get to the truth here. Ms. Miller asked you if you had any shred of evidence to indicate that Mr. Alcazar is dead. Do you have any evidence to indicate that Mr. Alcazar is alive? No. Would you explain to the jury what happened at your television studio on the night of April 20th? Sam McCall and I had just wrapped the show. Jason Morgan came by to see Sam, uh, or pick her up, I'm not sure which. Mm -hmm. We were getting ready to leave when suddenly there were two armed men there threatening us. Mm -hmm. Did these men identify themselves? I don't remember any pleasantries. Then again, I was pretty shocked. Well, well let me refresh your memory, Ms. Jaffe. According to a police statement, the men said that they were associates of Sonny Corinthos and Jason Morgan. Do you remember that? Peripherally. What happened next? One of the men aimed at Sam. Jason jumped him. The other men went to fire and Sam grappled with him. Uh, then she shot him. And what did the defendant do? He shot and wounded the other man. Jason had no choice. It was self-defense. Well, it just it never ceases to amaze me how the defendant's alleged career in the coffee industry involves all of these men with ties to organized crime and Objection. ambushes and shoes. Sustained. Look, all I know is the defendant saved my life. Twice. I imagine you were grateful to him for that. Yes, I am. Your gratitude wouldn't color your testimony before this court now, would it, Mr. Harper? <laughs> Shouldn't. Counsel's badgering his own witness. It's a fair question. The witness will answer. I'm here to tell the truth as I see it. Well, let me help you out. Isn't it the truth that you wouldn't have been in danger in the first place if the defendant wasn't a professional hitman? Isn't that right? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Withdrawn, Your Honor. No further questions. The witness is excused. We will take a short recess. To tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so up you guys. I do. Please be seated. Could you state and spell your name for the record, please? Donald, D-O-N-A-L-D, Mancini, M-A-N-C-I-N-I. -I. Thank you, Mr. Mancini. And what is your occupation? I'm a gardener. For Mr. Alcazar? I work for all the houses on that road. Hmm. And how long have you held this occupation? Two years. Seems like quite a workload. <laughs> I have routine. I stick by it and it serves me well. And what is that routine? I start at five, sharp. I put in however many hours are needed, and then I go home. Do you recognize this man? Do you recognize the defendant? I sure do. And do you remember seeing him the day that Lorenzo Alcazar disappeared? I did. First thing. Where? Outside Mr. Alcazar's house. Could you tell the court exactly what you saw? I saw Jason Morgan put Mr. Alcazar's dead body in the back of an SUV. 